Ooh, it's a little brisk out here. Car temperature says 36. And yeah, it probably is. There's some frost on the windows. Plan was to come out here and do a little backpacking, but the road is right next to the river. I'm just gonna fish and hopefully I can sleep in my car at night and fish and sleep in my car at night and fish. So this is a four day trip going over to the fly shop in Bridgeport right now. Bridgeport, so a lot of people know where that is. That's the river I'm fishing on today. I'm gonna go upstream and fish, 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 fish until my pants fall off. It's September, it's a beautiful morning. Got the river flowing nice and slow behind me, 270 CFS. This is the rig. It's my little indicator there. Kind of a big indicator, looks just like a bobber. This thing is really cool actually. So a lot of the times when you're fly fishing like this, the stuff that you use to fish, it's, it's gonna crimp your line. But these things, they've got a little cap. So you can untwist it a little bit, there's a piece of rubber. And you can twist it down and it'll stay tight. That way, line stays tight. You can adjust depth really easily. And I've got two nymphs on below two split shots. So it's two little BB size split shots right there. Let's go into a San Juan worm. This river is barbless only, artificial only. So San Juan worm. Going to my favorite hand tied by myself, zebra midge black zebra midge so that's what we got going on right now special regulations for this river you can only keep one fish a day and it has to be at least 18 inches long so there's some big fish in here and i'm gonna get out there it's nice and brisk it's cold it's like 32 degrees right now i'm gonna start up river just a little bit and work my way down to this little bend so let's get on it fly fishing eastern sierras 2019 there's actually a really nice boulder about a hundred yards upstream that's the only structure i see out here so for now i'm just going to cast into this kind of a riffle hopefully get really lucky i'm going to work my way out slowly really slowly really quietly I'm not going to disturb too much water as i walk do some roll casts because there's a lot of bush behind me All right, well, no fish yet, but I feel like my fly fishing has improved a lot because I don't have any knots in my line. I didn't get any tangles yet. I'm gonna make my way up to this rock over here. I was gonna walk over to that boulder, but my hands are about to freeze off. I'm freezing cold. I'm gonna go back in the car, warm up my hands and keep driving for a couple miles. Well, kind of slow this morning. Not having much luck here. Water might be a little too shallow, or I'm just a bad fly fisherman. Either way, I'm going to reassess the situation, try to find a couple deeper spots on Google Maps, satellite view, and my determination hasn't wavered. But sorry, there's not too much fish in action yet. There's just no fish yet. So I'm going to keep at it. I like my setup. Still early. We're going to get some today. Man, no luck there like I thought I'd have, but up here, there's a couple rocks, so I'm making my way up there now. Actually, there's one under there, so there's potential to be fish here for sure. Let's give this a shot right here. I'm trying to get as drag free of a drift as I possibly can. Sometimes it looks like bites, but I can't tell for sure. My eye isn't trained very well. I'm kind of feeling it right now. I'm feeling like a fish could happen any minute. Got one. Got a nice one right here. Hell yeah. Right when I said that, baby. Barbless hook. This is a nice rainbow. This could be an 18 incher. Woo! Hell yeah, man. It's coming in. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, that's a nice, beautiful colored fish. Could this be my first brown? Could this be my first brown trout? This is a nice fish, man. Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Right where I thought it would be. 
All right, let's see what he wants to do. Is he ready? Just keep intention on him. Just keep intention. Oh, that's a, I don't know what it is, but, oh, that's a nice rainbow right there. Man, that's nice. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's a nice fish, baby. Oh, no, no, stay down, stay down, stay down. We are barbless, we are barbless. Let's see what he took. Do you take the rain, the, the, that's a nice fish, man. Let's see if I can get him right here. No, he took the midge, took the midge. No, he took the worm. He's trying to swim upstream. Don't spit it, don't spit it, don't spit it. Come on, come on top, right on top, right on top. Skim the water, right on top. No, 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 not yet. Stay on, please, please stay on. Yeah, this one I'm gonna measure. If he's 18, I'm gonna keep him. That's a nice fish, man. Look at that. All right, I guess he's looking pretty good. I'm gonna work him down towards my net. Right up here, right up here. Look at that fish. Freaking gorgeous. Wild rainbow trout. Man, this is pretty awesome. I worked my butt off for this fish right here. It's not legal. It's a big fish, but it's not legal. This one is about 15, 16 inches and I gotta release them because they need to be 18 inches to keep. You can only keep one a day. Um, but I think I've got it, got it honed in. There he is. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna release him. So if he jumps out of my hands, that's okay. I just wanna show you guys one more time. There he is. Look at that thing. Beautiful, man. Wild rainbow trout caught on the worm. Gorgeous fish. That's what it's all about, man. I've been out here for about three hours trying different spots, trying different spots, but determination pays off. Just keep at it. And if you don't find what you're looking for in one spot, keep looking. Look for the, look for the structure, look for the boulders, look for the rocks. The trout there, just like any other animal, just like humans, we want to save energy as, as, as much energy as possible. So they'll find a boulder like that and stay behind it and just hunker down until they see some food swim by and then they'll come out and get it. So think about it like that. That's where a lot of these fish are. And just because this boulder is on top, doesn't mean that a big boulder underneath doesn't have the same effect. They're still gonna stop the water behind it. So if you can see a dark thing and the water boiling around it, chances are there could be a fish under there. So I'm gonna release this guy and I don't see why there couldn't be another fish out there. So I'm determined now to get a keeper and do a catch and cook. Quick little lesson, something I've learned over the few times I've been fly fishing. If you're casting like this, you want to cast up river like that and, and pull it towards you, keep your line tight kind of. If you need to give it a mend, go ahead and give it a mend. But when you want to recast, just let some line out. Let it, you know, you're drifting, getting a nice natural drift and load up the rod. Let the, let the water load up the rod for you. And you can just do one, one cast like that. And you'll get it right back where you want to. Fly fishing is like a whip. That's how you get the line out. There's no weights other than split shots, but split shots aren't for casting. Split shots are for getting down in the water column. The weight is your fly is your fly line. That's what you use to cast with. Sometimes these fly rods are so awkward to handle. It takes so long to get them set up. When you move to spot to spot, sometimes it just takes forever. But here's a little trick. You can wrap your line around the handle like that and then put one of your flies around the eye not exactly the eye, but close to it, the eye of the guide. And now when you're ready to fish on the next spot, just unhook it and you're ready to go. It's really shallow over here, but I do see a couple things under the water that I'm trying to target. Right behind me, there's a big iron colored rock and that's about a foot underwater. So I'm gonna set my indicator and stuff to about two feet. And uh, that should be the proper depth, hopefully. There's a couple things like that underwater, really hard to see from camera, I bet, but I'm gonna give it my best. I'm gonna cast upstream of it. I don't wanna cast right on it or else it might spook the fish and they're looking upstream too, so let's give it a shot. 
Now obviously the bigger fish, it's summertime, so they might be in the deeper water, in the cooler water, but the bigger fish probably going to be in the shallow, in the deeper pools too, I would assume. Anyway, just going to cast here, just work this area one time, see if I can pull anything out of these riffles. Pretty fast water, but I'm pretty sure there's fish here too. I bet there's fish throughout this whole damn stream. Well, my skill level is not advanced enough to fish this kind of water, but upstream, those boulders and those riffles and that white water, that's a little bit more fisher friendly, beginner friendly. So that's the plan right now, get up there. For all the advanced fly fishermen out there, how would you fish a run like this? There's some rapids there, a little calm spot, rapids here, and then a riffle right here. Would you fish the riffle at all, or would you just concentrate on that? Because that's where I'm going right now. Really fast moving water right here. Uh, pretty shallow too. I don't know if I'm wasting my time, but I'm gonna work this one a little bit, work this boulder a little bit, and then right behind it is another one, and over here, there's another nice boulder. It's pretty shallow here though, so I don't know what to expect, honestly. I think this is gonna to be too hard right here, this one. Not sure how to fish this one, if it's even fishable. Oh, that was probably bottom. And that might've been a fish. But yeah, I don't know. Like the water's moving so fast, might need another split shot for this spot. So here's what's going on. Fished about 15, 20 different spots. Only one has produced really well. Caught about four or five fish there, landed one, landed two actually, but no keepers yet. So right now I'm gonna let that spot cool down a little bit, go have some lunch. A Couple hours from now, I'll go back there and try to land a keeper for dinner tonight. I'm gonna go out back into town, have some lunch, just chill for a little bit, and then hopefully go catch me a nice brown, maybe a nice rainbow trout. So that right there is the fly that I'm using on the bottom. And that's, a, it's a midge. It's supposed to imitate something like that. Now the one I have is kind of big. I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but that little mosquito thing, it's got that kind of a silver twisted circular pattern along its body. So that's what this little midge, zebra midge right there is supposed to imitate. This time I've got it tied on with a little loop. So it doesn't, so wherever the line goes, it still stays in its position. Above that, this time, I think this is a caddis. The guy at the fly shop told me to use this one, so that's what I'm using. And right above that, two BB size split shots. All right, I'm back out here. Whew, mosquitoes are coming out now. Got a zebra midge on, that's good. Gonna fish this for half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. And then I'm gonna go around a bridge and hit it from the backside. So got all rigged up now. Only thing to do left is catch some fish. I'm back for you guys. Actually, they're down there. So I'm gonna go get them. All right, trying the same thing now. Just gonna work my way up. Same rig pretty much, except this time no worm. This time there's something a little bit different. It's the caddis and the midge on the bottom. Hopefully those couple that I hooked earlier are back and they're not so spooked anymore. Good drift, I like it, I like it. We can catch some fish here. Just waiting for that bobber to go under. I think there were a couple that I missed because I didn't set the hook hard enough. This time, if, e if ever it goes under, I'm setting the hook hard.
Lost another rig. Man, it is cold as heck right now, but it's beautiful out here. Beautiful sunset just passed, beautiful mountains, gorgeous valleys, just amazing, spectacular. Look behind me, take a look at that. Just purple, glowing, beautiful, man. So I'm gonna enjoy my night here, just take everything in, put this camera away, start bright and early today, start fishing again. But I love tent camping, but it's still so nice just to hop into your car. Got a mattress in there, just bunker down, especially when it's cold and windy like this, it's nice in there. It's gonna be a good night tonight. Bright and early, just like I said. As I was laying here last night, there was something I was thinking about, something about fishing. When you're fly fishing particularly, you watch that indicator go down, down river, downstream. A lot of the times when it goes under, you set it, you miss it. It just goes straight into the air. Other times you'll watch that indicator go down, you'll set it, it's a log or it's the bottom. Damn it. But other times when that indicator goes downstream, it goes under and you set it and it starts fighting back and you know you stuck a fish. Oh man, that's so satisfying. There's not many things in this world that compare to that feeling. Ooh, it starts fighting. Man, so that's all I'm trying to do today is get, get that little feeling. So I'm up early. Limit here is two trout a day. They need to be 16 inches long. So the one I caught yesterday would have been legal over here, but that's all I'm looking for. Trying to get a fish, trying to get that feeling stick in one, barbless hooks only, and hopefully get one to eat. But before the sun rises anymore and before the wind picks up, I'm gonna get out of here. There's two spots I want to fish today. So let's let's get at it. Well, first thing in the morning, I was going to tie up some flies, but I think it's a better idea to go check out the river and see what depth it is, because I might do a hopper dropper, or I might just do the indicator. I'm not sure yet. But you see my big shadow on the floor right there? I would like to avoid that going in the water. So there's the river right in front of me. Got my sunglasses on, a complete necessity when you're out here fishing like this. River's flowing to my left, which is good. So the, the trout will be facing upstream. I'm gonna go over here first and just check it out. Well, this is gonna be a big test if I'm a good fly fisherman or not. I see two fish right here in this bend. Take a look, it's freaking beautiful, clear water. Right over there, there's two, there's about three fish and they're just cruising, looking for food. It's only about three feet deep here. I don't even think I need a nymph right now because it's so shallow. I'm just gonna try a dry on top first. Let him take it. Once he goes back under, then I'll set it. This is the fly I'm gonna tie on. I don't know what it is, but all I know is that it's a dry fly and it'll stay on top. And right below that, about a foot, is this little red midge. So on this dry fly on top, I'm gonna put some floatant on it. Put a little on my fingers. Just a dab, a little dab will do you. And just work it into the into the hairs of this thing. All right, that's about it. Now let's go cast out right in front of them. Let's see if they take it. Oh man, all that excitement, what I thought was fish was just weeds and reeds that got stuck flowing in the current. I don't see any fish here. Let's keep walking. You see in the water there, a lot of these reeds and whatever that is, those weeds, they flow with the water so smoothly, just like a fish. It's really shallow here. I'm hoping if I keep walking, it's gonna get deeper. All right, now I have actually found a fish, a real fish this time. So, see if I can catch him. Oh, there he is, he's going over there to feed. All right, I see his feeding lane. He's got a big little feeding lane about two feet wide, going back and forth. I just need to get this thing down a little deeper. Well, my casts are damn near perfect, I think, but he doesn't want this midge. Yeah, he's not moving very much either. I think I've got to get this thing right down in front of his face, which means adding another foot of line to the bottom rig. While I have everything off, I'm tying everything new, I'm just gonna try to tie this little streamer on first. It's weighted, it's not deep here, so I'm hoping that this will do the trick. I've yet to catch a fish on a streamer too, so if I do, it's gonna be really 
really worth it. He almost went for it. There he is again. He took it, got him, got him. On the streamer, baby, let's go. What a beautiful thing to see that fish come up and take this. My goodness, beautiful wild rainbow. I'm gonna release him. There he goes. That's the little thing. And I tied this canoe man loop on top. So it's not just regular knot, it's just the, the line can swing freely. Wow, that was one. Haven't been at it for too long. That was the first fish I've targeted too. Let's go. That was probably about 12 inches. So four more inches, we can keep a couple. You know what's crazy? From all the videos on trout that I've seen, usually the more aggressive, more dominant ones are in front. They get the first pick of the food coming down river. Right behind them is another smaller trout. So if that one big one moves out of the way, the smaller one comes up and takes the main feeding lane. So same exact spot, there's another trout there. I highly doubt it's the same one, unless he's on like a bed or something. But do they do that? Do trout have beds? But anyway, if it's a different one, see if he'll bite again. This is gonna be interesting. Ooh, he bit it. He bit at it. Missed him though. Could be the same fish and he's just scared, but looked like he took a swipe at it. Anyway, I'm gonna keep on walking. Pretty cool, man. Got one. GoPro start recording. Oh, it came off. Barbless. Damn. I know a lot of people probably don't fish these streamers like I'm fishing them. I'm kind of fishing it just like a jig throwing it in front of me and jigging it. This one came out of the cuts, smashed it. So exciting to see them come out of their little hole, come out, look at your bait, take it and try to go back in, but you set the hook on them. Nothing like it, man. You know, I can't see anything in here, but I know it's deep as heck right there. And I don't want to walk in front of it and get my shadow in there. So I'm just gonna kind of blind cast it and, and hope my instincts are right. So every little bend like this, where it gets deep, I don't see any fish, but where it gets deep, that's where I know they're probably holding. So I'm casting this streamer right out there. Let's see if there's anything in this hole. Ooh, something took it. Try to at least. I think I gotta let him take it a little bit better. Ooh, took a swipe at it. Come on, take it. Oh, it took a swipe at it again. Yeah, I'm almost certain I spooked him. Oh, he's back. And we got him. I got him. Oh, it came off. Dang. Well, that was the one I was after, so let's keep moving. Come on, man. I gotta land some sooner or later. One thing I think I'm doing wrong, I'm being too impatient. I'm not letting the fish take the fly first. I think I've got to let him take it and swim down. Right when he touches it with his nose, that's when I've been setting the hook. So I've got to be a little bit more patient, a little bit more self-control. Little baby on the midge, little brownie. Get out of here, man. on this thing. Wipe my hands. Look at the colors on that thing. Look at that. Beautiful. Such a beautiful fish. Bye, right, buddy. See you later. I was going to go out and try something new. Go out into the water. Cast it out and got one.
This cow is freaking me out right here. Just came over to me, started making all kinds of noises. Hey cow. Now there's a big bull right there with horns. I don't know what to think. Well, that's just how it happens sometimes, I guess. Hope you enjoyed the video. There's one more chance, one more fish that has my name on it.